the uh, drawdown of ponds and use three watersheds. And uh, our representative from DNR responded back to us and said, look, this is a complex issue. Uh, they would like to review it. Uh, it has always seemed that straight repairs are grandfathered, but the more extensive the repair and for any retrofits, it is strongly encouraged that we approach uh, the Department of Natural Resources for their, for their input in cold water fisheries. Any other questions or comments? So Stu, one of the questions that we had earlier was going to be, um, is MDE looking for local feedback on changes in the uh, regulations or design standards? Um, so you have kind of answered that, but how should people actually provide that input or, or feedback? I will probably, I'll be getting some, into more of those details shortly. We will be opening up numerous forums or possibilities for commenting or participating in that process. Uh, this is obviously the first step. Uh, we will be conducting more webinars on this as we move forward. We will be reaching out to you with more surveys and or more uh, discussions. Uh, we're still internally discussing some options on how to do that. So uh, right now, the best way you can share it is by responding to the questions and to the surveys we've posted for you uh, as part of this uh, series of webinars. Okay, and no uh, other new questions just yet. Um, actually, sorry, I take that back. Um, should Small Pond Maryland 378 reviewers be certified? John or Hal, would you like to answer that one? Sure, um, I'll chime in here. And I, I kind of responded to this um, comment here in the chat box because I think, um, I'm assuming John may have accidentally posted the question to me as, and he probably meant it for everybody. Um, but it was a good question. So I decided to make the response public. It's a complicated issue. Um, you know, we, would like to see that people who are reviewing small ponds and dams um, demonstrate some level of, of technical competency, right? I think that would make all of us feel good to know that. Um, but how would that look? You know, we have the responsible personnel certification right now. Um, it's quite a burden to launch something like that and implement it and then keep it going. So you know, that unfortunately, um, the reality is that would draw resources away from other s assistance we could provide if we had to do that at the current moment. But um, it's a discussion we've had kind of, you know, casually in the office, but the Association of State Dam Safety Officials have had this um, conversation in public forums multiple times. And I think everybody is, straying away from any kind of national or local certification because dams are complex structures. Dams require multidisciplinary engineering reviews and it's very hard to say that you are fully certified or qualified um, in all aspects of dam design and construction when you're most likely an H&H &H specialist or a geotechnical engineer or, or whatnot. So um, I think that all of us as engineers, you know, have a duty to obtain um, professional development and continuing education and, you know, staying current. And we try to offer what we can training wise. And I'll repeat what I mentioned earlier is, is seeking out training as well. Um, it does have a cost, which I know is difficult sometimes. ASCE has a number of seminars. Uh, Association of State Dam Safety Officials has a range of products from a few free webinars to a few paid webinars to short courses to uh, conferences and all of that stuff. United States Society on Dams, uh, USSD, also offers some technical training. So it's out there and I'd encourage people to seek that out. And, you know, if there's topics that you would like training on, reach out to us because maybe we can bake that into some of our owner workshops that we develop so that we're providing the information to you that you need. 
Thank you, John. Uh, um, let me issue a quick correction. I think I had a slide that said the next webinar is on October 16th. That is an error. It's on October 14th, which is a Wednesday. So again, that would be October 14th. Thank you. Any other questions? So we had a question in the chat from Amanda and her question was regarding use three work. It is my understanding that DNR is interested in all BMPs, not just code 378 ponds. Uh, Greg, is that true? And Greg Golden confirmed that that, that is indeed correct. Um, so we had another uh, statement from Elmer um, regarding certification for pond review. How about just focus on the ponds that would be approved locally by SCDs and certify the approval process and those folks involved? That would be a smaller effort and the NRCS could assist. For consistency's sake, you know, across the state, I do think, and maybe I'm responding to Elmer, your comment, um, if I'm interpreting it right, there, there could be value in ensuring that we are all performing the same level of review and asking the same questions and demands of applicants. Um, so kind of having a unified um, process is, is something that could come out of these workshops or, you know, it's, it, or, it, so let me say it that way too. If people have a good process um, that they would like to share, please reach out because um, it's always easier to start something from a foundation than start it from scratch. And, and we can take some of your good uh, advice and good lessons learned to help build from that. Thank you, John. All right, I'm gonna move forward. We have 10 minutes uh, remaining and I'd like to ask some questions for you out there who have been uh, so diligently watching us and patiently watching us all morning. So, don't worry, we're not going to answer all these questions now. However, if you have comments or questions, please ask us. We will be sending you these questions as part of uh, the PDF that will be sent to you later and possibly as a survey. But we wanted to know how we can make this forum more interactive. We struggled with this. We wanted to have more discussion time. That's awfully difficult to do in a virtual setting. We want to know if you are interested in participating in developing these guidance documents. If there's a large interest in participating, we can develop mechanisms to make that happen. What do you need from us? Clearly the surveys have shown that more training court communication are needed. Are there other things that local jurisdictions are looking for? Are there topics of concern that you would like to see discussed? Obviously climate change is high on everybody's uh, list. There may be other topics. I see a lot of questions about use three and temperature. We, we really kind of don't know how many small ponds fail each year in Maryland and why these failures occurred. You know, what is, this, what is the condition of ponds in your jurisdiction? How can we reduce the potential for failure? This is an important one, the top of this page. What is the best way for us to notify you of new design guidelines? Again, as I mentioned, many of you we're unaware of certain dam safety policies or guidance documents, and we want to make sure that when new information is available, that we get it to you. Climate change, again, is on everybody's thoughts. What does that mean for small pond design? Should we be using different design criteria? What about urban flooding and stormwater conveyance issues? We had a couple questions on that today. Uh, are we sizing our stormwater conveyance systems properly or should we be using a different storm event? Many of the flooding events we see in our area are from high intensity short duration storms that may only produce two to three inches of rain but cause a lot of local flooding problems. How do we address these issues with our, our infrastructure? Weir walls, we've been using weir walls for a number of years. Do you have suggested criteria for the design? We've asked several times, and I think this is a good question. What criteria do you have for the smaller practices, the dinky dams that, that Amanda talked about? Uh, you know, if we're gonna address these properly, we, we kind of want to reach out to you and find out what you're using as well. So I'd like to 
bring up a few items in closing. And then I'll entertain some questions. A link to your certificate for those of you who are looking for continuing education units or professional development hours will be available at the end of today's session. In fact, I see it has just cropped up on our chat. You have to be both registered and here for the entire program to get your continuing education units for today. The link has been posted in chat for feedback. It will be open for 15 minutes past the end of the program. And okay, guys, I'm sorry, but we have to do this. The link will take you to an evaluation of the session and you have to complete the evaluation before you receive an email with your certificate. I'm sorry, about the best way we can get feedback on how we've done today. Finally, certificates for today's session will not be available after today's session. So don't come, um, you know, we will not be able to get that to you tomorrow or the following days. This slide has it correct. The next session will be on October 14th and the last session is on November 18th. And again, we're gonna send out a PDF with information about today's presentations and questions in a couple of weeks. With that, we have five minutes um, I will entertain any final questions or thoughts uh, from the participants or other presenters.